Talking about different types and styles of piston, just for some orientation, I mean, there's lots of different ones on the market and way more than what I'm going to present here, but it's a generic application of looking at the different types and styles that are out there and really what they're, what they're for. So this one here in particular I've picked up is a forged steel, it's very heavy. It'll provide lots of longevity for wear. It takes on an awful lot of heat, and it is an extreme duty piston. And this one is out of a chassis air compressor for a truck application. So this is kind of an interesting one. It uses one, two, three compression rings, two on the top and one on the bottom. And then it also uses two scraper style oil control rings, because we really don't want to have any additional oil being displaced into the air tanks on a truck. So we have to have a certain amount on the cylinder which is controlled by this circumferential oil control ring and then the second one helps back that up. So the first one does some scraping and applying of oil and the backup one does scraping and applying of oil also. The other interesting thing about this one, it's a full floating friction reduction type of piston. So it has a pin that you can see I can just slide right out and it uses a Teflon button on the end of the pin as opposed to clips. So that allows this piston pin to move back and forth and float on the connecting rod as it's reciprocating up and down in the cylinder and then anytime it the pin moves enough to cause it to come out against the cylinder wall, the Teflon button when it's in its place will come out and just touch the, the side of the cylinder wall and then it kind of rebounds back in. And that allows it to float back and forth between the two sides and never really causing any friction between the movement of the piston pin on the piston and on the connecting rod. And again, this was kind of interesting being such an extreme duty piston, it's using a cast aluminum connecting rod. So next one I want to take a look at, and this is another diesel piston, is the squeeze cast fiber reinforced piston. So it's called an SCFR, squeeze cast fiber reinforced, and it's a full trunk style piston. We have oil return holes here which allow lubrication from a piston cooling jet to come out and help lubricate the whole skirt area. It's a corrugated type of skirt which allows oil to sit in those rings, the grooves all the way around, and that helps support the piston in operation while it's running in the engine. The top of this piston in a diesel engine makes up the combustion chamber. So there is no combustion chamber in the top or the underside of the fire deck of the head. It's all built into the top of the bowl, which also includes the clearance volume of that particular cylinder, which in turn calculates out compression ratio. And this piston, I, I'm pretty sure this one is about a 14 to 1 compression ratio. It might even be a 16 to 1. So, and then again, it's application specific for that particular style of piston. And comparison in the weight and the mass of this one compared to some of the other ones, it's quite heavy. So there is additional reinforcements on the inside of it as part of the casting process. And really the fiber reinforcement that's in this piston is almost like a strand type of fiber, a fabric material that is put in the piston with all the dry casting material and then it's heated and compressed. That's why it's called a squeeze cast because they squeeze it and compress all the materials that make up the structure of the piston to actually reinforce it. So squeeze cast, fiber reinforced piston. The next one here is a standard duty trunk style piston. It uses retaining clips to hold the piston pin in. The piston pin is fairly tight going in here and then it floats on the connecting rod just like in this particular one.
Okay, so it's only floating on the connecting rod and stays, tends to stay pretty fixed within this particular style of piston. It has a large, long type of trunk to it, and it has a bit of a slipper skirt and an extension on here to help provide more length of the skirt, which reduces the tipping in the cylinder. A lot of times what happens over time, when the cylinder becomes worn, it tips back and forth as it's going up over top dead center and over bottom dead center in neutral dwell, and it causes this skirt to collapse. When the skirt collapses, there's way too much room in here, and then the piston will actually make knocking noises when it's cold until it becomes hot and warms up, and then there's less knocking. The more the skirt is collapsed, obviously the, the more wear is going to be evident in the cylinder, and of course then it enforces doing a service procedure on it. So this is a flat top style piston. It has the manufacturer's uh, size stamped right on the top, 87.95 uh, millimeters, and it has an arrow for the designation of where it's supposed to point to, and in this particular case it's supposed to point to the flywheel for this style of piston. So um, some manufacturers include that on there, some do not. Some manufacturers include right on the top of their piston, and this one's kind of old and it's worn down. There is actually a number, and the number's on the inside of this piston for reordering it. So this one would go by the size, and of course the standard application, and again this is a cast aluminum piston. It's a cold cast, so it's not a very strong piston, won't support a boosted engine application, won't support nitrous, turbos, or superchargers. So next one here is a semi-slipper, and you see we've gone from this one being a full, full type skirt or full slipper to a semi-slipper, and then we're gonna go to a full slipper skirt, and I'll show you the, the differences here. So this one, you can see that the skirt is cut out considerably. We're reducing the overall size of the skirt mass. We've increased it a little bit here, but we've cut these out because we have crank counterweights. So as the piston's moving down and the counterweight comes up, it cycles by it just like this. So there has to be this additional room, and that allows the piston to move further down on the bore based on the stroke, and then won't allow it to interfere with any other components as it's rotating. This one's kind of an interesting one. Um, it is for an interference fit engine. So when we talk about an interference fit engine, that means that the valve movement interferes with the movement of the piston. Obviously, if, if we took a flat top piston and we brought it up and the valves were going to interfere, then the valves would hit and bend, destroy the piston, destroy the valves. So this manufacturer, because of a high lift camshaft or an overall height difference in the piston, the piston has been valve relief to allow the valves to come down into the piston into interference with it so that we can bring the piston up higher to attain higher compression ratios. When we talk about compression height of a piston, the compression height of a piston is from the center line of the piston pin to the furthest most point of travel at the top of the piston. So this difference right here is going to establish whether we have a higher or lower compression ratio. So if we had more material on the top here, we would actually have less space in the cylinder which would cause a pressure increase. So that would be deemed as a higher compression ratio piston. So for an example, if I had two of these exactly the same and one was an 8 to 1 piston, it wouldn't be as high as a 10 to 1 piston. So this one here, um, the pin has not moved in quite some time, so, but again, this one has three uh, rings in application, very short amount, and you can see that the pin is very, very high up and close to the oil control rings. So the next one here we're taking a look at, this is a full floating, full, full slipper type skirt. So, and it also has an anti-scuff coating on it. And that's this black material. You can dig at it with your fingernail, 
<clears throat> and you can remove that material on here, but typically we don't want to remove it. It's for initial break-in and anti-scuffing, so when the oil's on there, it should last quite some time, but over time it does tend to wear off. So it's not surprising when you pull a piston like this out after it's been in service for quite some time that the scuff coating has been removed, but it's also an indicator of where the scuffing has been happening. So <clears throat> if we look at the underside of this piston, and from the comparison of this one here, so these are both from the same style of engine, but they're obviously two different bores because they're quite a bit different in size. But this one here in particular, you can see that there's more clearance room between these two points. And that allows for the piston to travel further down into the cylinder or further down into the cylinder, and then for the crankshaft to actually come right around in this particular spot. So we've moved the pin and <clears throat> the location so it's not as wide because we need this extra space in here that's been cut into this piston to allow the crank webs to actually come right by this particular point. <clears throat> so this style of piston is a flat top piston again. It has lots of oil holes to allow lubrication to come into the oil control ring and to be scraped back off. And you can see here that the piston pin is very, very close to the top. And dependent upon the height of the piston in the cylinder is going to be determined by how much compression ratio would be in this. So this piston in particular is on an engine that I'm doing some work on right now and it's working out that the compression is going to be extremely high on that so I need to control the compression by changing what's called the deck height in the engine so I'm going to move the cylinder up which allows more volume if we have more volume it decreases the pressure so based on what I have right now it should be around a 12.6 to 1 compression ratio which is way too high I want it to be I want it to be down somewhere around 8.2 to 1. <clears throat> so there's different things that I have to look at during the building process to control that. And the next thing that we have to look at is how to control and, and what attributes that, which is the CC volume of the cylinder head. So we'll continue on with doing some more information related to CCing cylinder heads. So that's the basic types and styles of pistons that are on the marketplace. I mean, there's larger ones. There's some that are, uh, that are thermal, uh, uh, thermal molybdenum type pistons. So thermally, they're controlled with um, the structure of the piston so that the molybdenum that's coated on the piston does not touch the cylinder wall, but it attains a certain size and maintains that consistent size. So the skirt does not touch down. So this is the basic types and styles of pistons that the industry is using and there is lots of variations on these also that may include a molytherm piston which is a molybdenum coated thermal piston which expands at a certain rate based on its material. There's an autothermic type piston which means it automatically thermally compensates for the temperature application based on operating temperature and ambient startup temperatures. So manufacturers will usually tell you in their manuals exactly what style of piston is being used and if it's a custom application then additional research would have to be done.